Let me be the first to welcome you to the University of Missouri Department of Dermatology. My name is Jonathan Dyer. I'm the Philip C. Anderson Chair here at the Department of Dermatology. The mission of our department is to train dermatologists of excellence and diversity to care for all people, including the underserved, and to expand the boundaries of dermatologic knowledge. The Department of Dermatology here at the university was founded as a division of internal medicine in 1960 by Norman Azel, MD. Our first resident started in 1963 under the direction of Dr. Philip C. Anderson, whose presence still looms large over our department. Since that time, we now have trained over 110 dermatologists who are in practice all across the United States, and we've had over 100 medical students at our institution find their passion for dermatology here at the university. So our dermatology family is well over 200 strong and spread throughout the country. I think one of the interesting things about our program or one of our strengths is that we're able to adjust and be flexible and change with the times as we need. So we have a very strong history, but that doesn't help propel us forward if we can't be flexible and change with the times as needed. And we've been doing that for years. You know, every time we see a challenge or a roadblock, we're a small enough department that we can easily make change and flex pretty quickly. I think it's easier to turn a smaller boat than it is a bigger ship, and we've been able to do that over the years. Our residency program is comprised of multiple different training sites, uh, which is, I think, a great benefit to our uh, clinical training program. This includes the university hospital where inpatient consultations are performed, as well as our university uh, physician's outpatient clinic, which is adjacent to the hospital in our general medical complex. That's where our general dermatology clinics are and where most of the resident continuity clinics are performed. It's also where our dermatopathology lab is located and and our Mohs surgery unit is also located on the second floor of University Physicians Medical Building. So we're all kind of in one spot um, for much of the week on the second floor of that um, separate outpatient building on our main hospital complex. Across from the main hospital is also the Harry S. Truman VA, where the residents do spend a good portion of their clinical training. Uh, it is within walking distance of our department offices, our inpatient consultations, and also our um, university physicians building, so that if residents are at multiple sites throughout the day, usually that's within walking distance. Um, so that's pretty nice as well. You're not driving clear across town um, or even to other uh, remote sites that are out of town. Since I've been here, in the last eight years, every one of our clinical sites has either been built from scratch or has been remodeled. So our clinical sites are very new. Uh, I'm excited that now that includes my clinic at the Truman VA. We have a whole hallway that is for dermatology now. We have five or six uh, exam rooms that are dedicated to us. We have a state-of-the-art procedure room, and then our derm swamp that has two full walls of windows overlooking the Mizzou football stadium. It's a wonderful place to practice. We've got new clinic space that's being built as we speak. Uh, the layout of the clinic space is designed to really facilitate the clinical practice of dermatology. So we've got a, a large general dermatology clinical area that is also adjacent to our Mohs surgery unit with our dermatopathology lab in the back. The idea behind the space is to get, us, get the entire house of dermatology all under one roof and to really facilitate not only the clinical practice but also the educational and research components of what we do. So we have a number of specialty clinics here. I do the uh, cutaneous oncology clinic over at Ellis Fischel Cancer Center. Uh, that's four days a week um, and that's where we take care of most of our high-risk skin cancers and, and metastatic skin cancer patients and a small number of patients with genetic syndromes predisposing them to skin cancer. We also have a rheumatology dermatology clinic uh, with both the with Dr. Broadus, our dermatologist and dermatopathologist, and then our two rheumatologists who run that uh, again once a month together. We have a contact dermatitis and patch testing clinic run by Dr. Carrie Martin, and we have pediatric dermatology clinics. We have three pediatric dermatologists here. Our different years of residence do a variety of different things. Everyone gets a really good broad foundation in clinical and surgical dermatology as well as dermatopathology. 
and we've adjusted that over time as well. We try and really incorporate our residents' feedback into how we run our program and how we structure the different rotations and the different learning opportunities for each year of our residency program. So for example, one recent change we've made with that is our first year residents used to not rotate through dermatopathology formally until their second year. And now we have adjusted that where our first year residents will spend a sign out session each month with our dermatopathologist. And that's really important specifically for dermatopathology because if a resident develops interest in that, the application process for fellowship is very early in training. So they need to figure that out. They need that exposure to know if that's a direction they want their career to take. But in general, our first year residents are doing mostly clinical dermatology, bread and butter excisions, uh, surgical dermatology, but they're not rotating yet through full months of MOs or consults yet. They do take call, but they're not doing full months of consults yet. We really want that first year to be a time when they can really get a strong foundation. And then the second and third years, we really start customizing based on what they, what they want and what they need and the direction they want their career to go. The University of Missouri Dermatology Department has a very large catchment area, both in the state of Missouri and surrounding states. So as a result, we have a very busy surgical practice. Um, we see a lot of patients and have uh, some very complex surgical cases. So our residents have a very immersive um, and very broad surgical experience. Our residents have a very hands-on training during their surgical rotation. Um, our goal is to train residents that are very comfortable managing a broad number of cases irrespective of the clinical setting that they decide to work in. Um, our residents have graduated autonomy, so initially in their first year they will have resident surgical um, or excision clinics both in their continuity clinics and at our Veterans Affairs Hospital. In their second year, they start to have exposure to most surgery um, for a couple of months and then continue that on into their third year as well. In the rotation, there's a lot of um, direct bedside feedback uh, supplemented by mini surgical lectures and then also um, additional larger didactic lectures in, in surgery as well. So our Thursday afternoon didactics are broken down into four sessions. Our first session is typically our uh, group scope session where we go over our unknown slides one week and then we alternate that with topical based lectures on specific derm path diagnoses on the other week. Next section is usually a lecture followed by our case conference, which is where our consult resident brings all the interesting cases from, from the week that she or she was on consults for. The clinical faculty and residents can also bring in interesting cases that we saw that week in clinic and get to go over that and have everyone learn. We also add in our melanomas at the end so everyone can take a look at the, both the clinical and dermoscopic features of the melanomas that are coming through each week. Friday mornings is our book review session where we um, will each go over Bologna, Wolverton, and Elston dermatopathology. We read through each of those books each year and go over those chapters together. Every other week we also have an hour session with our Derm Path faculty where we join in with the pathology residents and do Derm Path topic-based lectures to supplement our education that way. There are many different conferences available with MU Dermatology. The main ones that we usually attend are the Missouri Dermatology Society Conference, which we go to annually. And we also go to the American Academy of Dermatology Conference, which is done annually as well. And we all go as co-residents and faculty. It's a great time to bond, professional development, education, and networking. There are so many opportunities for uh, Mizzou residents, dermatology residents, to be a part of community outreach. Um, that was one of the things that really brought me to Mizzou. One of the, the big things that stuck out to me was all of those opportunities. Um, some of my favorites are the MedZoo clinic uh, for underinsured and uninsured folks. Another opportunity is the ECHO program. Um, that is an incredible opportunity for um, not only the residents but the attendings to educate our primary care folks around the state. 
um, about dermatologic topics uh, that they may see every day and they may have questions about. And not only are they able to learn about it, they can present cases that are kind of interesting or that they don't know what to do with. And so we get to provide some help with that. And then another one is the uh, skin checks that we do in the, in the community. They're free skin checks. Um, one really fun one is the farmer's market skin check. We'll go, we'll set up tents, folks, um, just talk with folks and then we'll check their skin while they're at the the farmers market um, that one's really fun because the farmers market's a lot of fun and it's it's fun to go but it's also fun to get to interact with folks and and talk to them about their skin the University of Missouri is actually one of only six universities in the entire country that has the full complement of different internal colleges and schools like a school of medicine a school of veterinary medicine law school, arts and science, as well as having the largest research reactor of any public university in the country. And all of these things are located centrally. All of our campuses, the School of Medicine, MU Healthcare's main hospital campus, the vet school, and the, the undergraduate campus are all in one area. So it's very easy to collaborate and develop um, uh, crosstalk between different researchers on campus. Importantly, there's also an enormous amount of both internal and system-wide funding resources that are becoming available for the budding researcher, and those would be available to our trainees as well. There are a number of research opportunities for residents here, abundant I would say. The uh, University of Missouri is a fully fledged research university, so it has all of the resources that that offers, not just a college and a med school, but a graduate school, a nursing school, a veterinary school, each with their own set of research faculty and research facilities. So uh, lots of opportunities for residents to get involved with research uh, as they would like to do. Um, a real desire to have residents actually involved. The university is really investing in research, and one piece of evidence for that is this new next-gen research facility that has all the latest equipment and a lot of laboratory space for researchers, and the university is, is actively recruiting faculty to fill up that space, and all those faculty, of course, will be eager to have trainees involved in their research. Uh, so that is a wonderful opportunity. Graduates from our program leave the University of Missouri and go into a diverse variety of practices. Uh, in the last four years, we've had about 13 graduates. Uh, at least nine are in private practices and four have taken academic positions uh, around the country. We've had a number of our graduates pursue fellowship training. Many are able to match into the fellowship of their choice, which is something we're very proud of. Uh, I think about five of our graduates have pursued Moses fellowships. We've had two dermatopathology graduates, uh, one who pursued a cosmetic fellowship, and one who uh, pursued a cutaneous oncology fellowship. Columbia, it's just, it's so unique because it is a smaller town, so traffic's not horrible. You can have um, great quality of, um, of life but there's so much to do. Um, we're also halfway between Kansas City and St. Louis, and so you have the opportunities to easily get to larger cities if you'd like that um, type of social scene more. Um, also, you know, we, St. Louis is an international airport, so you can be anywhere in the world um, by just driving two hours, so that's pretty easy. Columbia also has an airport. It's a smaller airport, but it can get you to a couple major uh, cities where you can then fly anywhere else that you want to. The cost of living is really great here. A lot of residents actually do own homes. If you're gonna be here for three or four years, you can, you can own a home and then sell it when you're done or, or sell it to another resident. There's some great neighborhoods around here. Columbia has great public schools. We also have some private schools as well if you're interested in that. Um, but if you are a resident looking for um, looking for a city that will be good for a family, I think this is an excellent choice. Columbia also has a great food scene. There's a ton of amazing restaurants here, anywhere from a steakhouse called CC City Broiler, which I just love, to um, seafood. There's a place called Chris McDee's, Flyover, Murray's, the list goes on, but we have a ton of great restaurants, so if you're into the food scene, I don't think you'll be disappointed here. Probably my favorite thing about Columbia is all of the trails and parks that we have. I do not consider myself an avid runner, but I do enjoy jogging occasionally. And the MKT Trail is just hundreds of miles of trails that predominantly are, are wooded. So you're kind of underneath um, trees, making it shaded, which is, is nice in the summer, hot summer months. Um, but the trails are just, it's, 
they're amazing just to be able to get out there and run or um, walk your dog or ride a bicycle and just be out in nature. Um, Rockbridge State Park is also here in Columbia and that's not just like one trail, that's tons of different trails. I'm going up in woods and there's hiking and, and mountain biking back there and rock climbing and all sorts of fun things to do outside and it's so close so you don't have to drive an hour outside of the city to get to these opportunities. Um, Columbia really just has, it's so unique in the fact that it has so many um, amazing outdoor activities just kind of at your fingertips. When I get asked why a Floridian ended up in Missouri to do her dermatology residency, it's a really easy answer. I'd never been to the Midwest and I came here and I'd never felt more welcomed by a group of people before I was went out to a random restaurant for dinner while I was here interviewing and I had families coming over and sitting with me at the table and met friends my first time here. So that close-knit community feel is why I chose to come um, to Missouri for residency. And it's echoed in how we all get along together between faculty and residents. It's just a, one big family. Ours is a dynamic and growing department. From our clinical practice and outreach to our educational and research programs, we're excited by your interest and look forward to teaching you more about the University of Missouri Department of Dermatology.